this is not what you want your squash plants to look like. If you would rather have your squash plants looking like this, don't do what I did. Hey, it's Rachel. If you saw my prior video on getting a late start to the gardening season, you will already know that I have kind of a weird planting this year because of the late start and because I lost a ton of my transplants to fungus gnat larvae, I ended up with a big concentration of spaghetti squash, all planted right behind me and now all a total disaster. And I thought I would share what is different about these squash and some other squash in my garden and highlight what you wanna do differently. Normally I try and have a nice mix of things. And in this case, this year, because I had so few surviving transplants, I inadvertently ended up with kind of a concentration of one kind of plant. That I think is the fundamental and most important thing you should do differently. Do not plant in a monoculture. This many squash plants all together, all up on the trellis, essentially was like a big all you can eat buffet for squash pests. And I had a prior video on how I was managing that but I had the trifecta. I had cucumber beetles, I had squash bugs, and I had vine borer moths. And this sucked for two reasons. First, as you can probably tell, the vines are starting to die off under all of that pest pressure, despite my best efforts. Normally I would wait for the squash to be fully ripe and to be turning color to that yellow shade. Because these plants are struggling so much, I'm starting to harvest them early just to get anything off of them at all. I'm concerned that if I wait too long, I'm gonna end up with nothing. That's the main bummer, right? Is that I'm just not getting the kind of harvest I wanted. But the other bummer has just been the time suck on this. Every morning I was coming out, flipping over every single leaf on every single vine, looking for squash bug eggs. I would then go into every single blossom and I would use a paintbrush handle to go in and knock out cucumber beetles, squish those and kill them. I then went in with the other end of the paintbrush and hand pollinated them because as you can kind of see, I had a lot of female blossoms that just weren't getting pollinated. And then every time that it rained, I would go in and reapply BT spray to the base of every vine as well as diatomaceous earth onto the base of the vine and the soil around it. Not only was this just annoying from a time suck perspective, but practically speaking, it meant that I did not spend as much time as I normally would on other things in the garden, like pruning my indeterminate tomatoes especially and making sure that they had good airflow and staying on top of the weeding overall. Now that we have established what not to do, namely planting in a monoculture, let's talk about what you should do. This bed is a much more diverse group, not a full polyculture, but a lot better. I have chard in here, I have tomatoes in here, and I do have a couple of delicata squash in here, as well as a volunteer cucumber plant that came up in the back of the garden and that I transplanted over here. All of this is surrounded by a cover crop of mustard, meaning that in total, I have at least four different plant families in this bed. Now, this mustard doesn't just give me another plant family in the mix. It fulfills two of the things that I suggest you proactively do, pest confusion and pollination support. Normally I use holy basil to confuse pests because it has a really strong scent and it also attracts pollinators. This year, my holy basil transplants got wiped out in the massacre that took out the rest of them. And consequently, I switched to using a mustard cover crop to try and do the same thing. The scent of the mustard helps with pest confusion. I currently am finding squash bugs active on those spaghetti squash that are maybe, let's see, 30 feet away. And I'm not seeing a single one on the vines that are down here surrounded by all of this mustard. These are positively swarming with bees. Um, these mustard blossoms are attracting bees like no one's business and have really aided in pollination. These tomatoes are tucked down at the base of the cage, but they have had no shortage of pollination and I'm getting really good fruit set. Similarly, over here, kind of see some bees buzzing around. I'm already getting really nice fruit set on these delicata squash. Last, possibly controversial statement, I don't know if you actually need to trellis these squash. I've always made a point of trellising things in the squash family because it helps with airflow and prevents powdery mildew, but despite the trellising and my best efforts at pruning, they did still succumb to a little bit of powdery mildew. It's not as if the trellis is some magic cure-all. I decided to do kind of a mini experiment over here on this bed. I took one main vine of each plant and I wrapped it just kind of up this little small wire frame to give it kind of a mini trellis effect. Did this one over here and I did this one over here. I wanted to see if there was any difference in pollination in particular, if having it up out of the ground and exposed would improve pollination. I did get, you know, this one is obviously fully pollinated. This guy down here, 
is pollinated. So like this vine has two. This trellised vine I showed you earlier has this fully pollinated squash, which is nice. But this, what we'll call control vine, since I didn't put it up on anything, it's just sprawling on the ground, has a fully pollinated squash as well. So even down here, the bees still found it. And there's just so much activity happening in this mustard that the pollination is taking care of itself. That is how not to grow squash. This is how to grow squash. Plant them in a polyculture, provide pest confusion, provide pollination support, and totally up to you on whether or not you trellis them. If you live in a really humid, damp climate, it might be worthwhile, but my own experiment so far here suggests, first, that the trellis is not a cure-all, and second, that you will get pollination just fine, even if it's growing on the ground. And I suspect you will get better pest confusion if the plants are down low and surrounded by something strongly scented. That is it for me. I'm gonna hang out with these happy bees and keep harvesting this squash on the bad example before they're all completely dead. This has reaffirmed for me that I need to always follow my own best practices, even in the years that I have weird stuff happen. I hope it was helpful for you to avoid making the same mistake that I did. And as always, let me know if you have questions. Until next time, thanks.